Hello there, I'm Brian. This is my photo show. Welcome. So today's topic is hyperfocal marks. What are they and how can they help both save you money and make you a better photographer? So the hyperfocal marks, and uh, I'm here I'm talking about Nikon lenses, but this applies to all lenses. All, uh, all major manufacturer lenses have hyperfocal marks. Nikon is kind of special because they color code their hyperfocal marks as opposed to most manufacturers, which you didn't. Uh, they simply just put little numbers uh, indicating which, uh, which f-stop is relevant. So hyperfocal marks are indications on a lens um, which show you the zone of focus at a given f-stop. So for example, here we have a 24mm f2.8 lens and the hyperfocal marks are here on the lens barrel and they're color-coded to correspond with various f-stops. Okay, so 16 is blue, 11 is yellow, 8 is pinkish red, and then it skips 5-6 to go to 4, which is green. And I suspect they skipped 5-6 because it's so close to 8 and 4. Um, it, would, it would look crowded or something. So, how do I use these things? Why are they useful? Uh, they're particularly useful on wide-angle lenses because wide-angle lenses have a rather broad zone of focus to begin with. But in, but in order to exploit that, you really need to understand the concept of hyperfocal distance and what these marks are. So, for example, suppose I want to take a photograph of, um, uh, let's say my nephews are playing dodgeball or something, right? And I've got this, this 24 millimeter lens and I'm standing at the edge of the field and and uh, my nephews are running around uh, and uh, I'm shooting them with a camera that doesn't have particularly good autofocus tracking or maybe a manual focus camera. So what do I do? Well, I take the, I, I'm going to set my lens to, let's say, f11. f16 is the smallest aperture. You're going to get some diffraction there. You, you're going to sacrifice image quality. So let's go in and stop and say f11. All right, so I'm going to put the infinity symbol. I'm going to match that up to the hyperfocal mark over here, color-coded yellow to f11. All right. And when I do that, the infinity lines up with that yellow mark. Great. So what? Well, here's so what. You go to the other yellow mark on the other side of the, um, of the focusing index, and you see that this yellow mark corresponds to about uh, 0.8, maybe, you know, point, let's say, 8 tenths of a meter. Okay? Roughly. So that means that the zone of focus of this lens, as it is currently set, oh wait, excuse me, as it is currently set at f11, um, set at hyperfocal distance, means that everything will be in focus from infinity to eight tenths of a meter. So again, I'm taking photographs of my nephews playing uh, uh, playing dodgeball or football. And I know that they, at, at, at all times, they're going to be at least eight tenths of a meter away from me. Uh, they're, they're not going to get that, uh, that close. I'm, I'm going to stand at least say, a meter away from whatever it is I'm shooting. Well, everything I'm shooting is going to be in focus. Because here is, this shows me the zone of focus. Infinity to eight tenths. Um, and that's fairly consistent. I, I don't, you know, I'm not an engineer, I, I, and I don't know this for a fact, but it seems fairly consistent across lenses. That is, an, a 24 millimeter lens at f11, if I take, for example, here's a 24 millimeter f2 AIS. This is a 24 millimeter f2.8 uh, pre-AI. So this is a, a much newer lens and um, different optical formula entirely. And again, if I set my infinity mark over f11, which here is sort of a mustard yellow. All right, I set my infinity mark over that, and I look over here. Uh, my hyperfocal is 0.7, so that's pretty close. Okay, 0.7 on this lens, 0.8 on this one. Um, so again, from seven tenths of a meter out, everything's going to be in focus. Now, as lenses, as as the focal length gets longer, the zone of focus gets narrower and so the utility of hyperfocal focusing decreases. For example, let's take an extreme case. Let's go to the good old 135 35 
And here we see the hyperfocal marks marked on the barrel here. Um, and let's go to the most extreme one, F32. Okay, that's, that's, <laughs> that's pretty extreme. So the F32 is color-coded blue. And I match that up to the blue hyperfocal mark here. And I look on the other side of the, the, um, um, the index mark for, for focusing. And I see that everything from now about 9 meters to infinity is in focus. Okay, so 9 meters to infinity at f32 versus, you know, 7 tenths of a meter to infinity at f11 for the, for the 24 millimeter lens. That, that, uh, that's simply a function of the fact that telephoto lenses have a much, much narrower um, f a plane of focus. Um, you can, I mean, they're, they're still somewhat useful, but nonetheless, uh, they're mostly useful, in my opinion, on wide angle lenses. For example, here is a 28mm f3.5, one of my favorite Nikon lenses because it's, it's just um, uh, it's so underrated and underappreciated. So, um, if I, again, I'm, I, don't, I don't realistically want to use the smallest aperture, which on this one is 22. Let's say I set it at f16. Again, and the only reason I'm avoiding it, I could set it at 22, but generally you're going to get diffraction at the smallest aperture of a lens, which is, um, which is an optical fault. That, um, that degrades the image quality. So I want to avoid that and set it at f16 instead of 22, hopefully minimize the diffraction. I put my infinity symbol over the hyperfocal mark for 16, which in, on this lens is blue. I look on the other side and here we go. I'm about between 0.8 and 1 meter, so say I mean, at least 9 tenths of a meter. So just under a meter uh, is going to be in focus. Everything's going to be in focus. Uh, and even if I dial that back to say F8, okay, F8 here is indicated by the color pink. I put the infinity symbol over the pink hyperfocal mark, and I can see that everything now from about just under two meters uh, to infinity is going to be in focus. So if, at, so if I set the lens in this manner at F8, Hyper, and I, I set the aperture at f8, and I set the hyperfocal mark at f8. Uh, now I, uh, I can shoot with confidence anything that's you know two meters away out to infinity, and I know that it's going to be in focus. Um, this is an extremely useful thing to learn because uh, I've said it before in, in another video. <laughs> if you need a computer to help you focus a 24 millimeter lens then perhaps you should reconsider photography as a hobby. Okay. And, and this is one of the reasons. If you, you understand the, the concept of um, um, depth of field, zone of focus, and hyperfocal focusing, you can save a whole heck of a lot of money on your 24, 28 millimeter lenses, uh, and certainly anything wider, uh, by opting out of autofocus and buying the older, uh, manual focus lenses. Now I know some people are going to say that, well, there's this expert who says that uh, you know, uh, uh, lenses wider than 35 millimeter have become so much better in recent years. And okay, fine, let's assume that's true. Those lenses are very expensive. They're mostly made of plastic. They're mostly G series without physical aperture rings, so you can't use them on your film cameras. Um, and the, the, the icing on the cake is these lenses don't suck. <laughs> they really don't. You know, the, to say that something else is better doesn't mean that this is bad. Um, there's, there's really, there are very, very few prime Nikkor lenses that are truly um, worth avoiding, put it that way. Um, so the, on Nikons, the, uh, the hyperfocal marks appear in different places. On the, on the pre-AI lenses, they are usually under the, on the lens barrel under the focusing ring. Uh, such as on this one, the, and the, again, the, uh, some of the, the pre-AI lenses are, had the, um, uh, this part was, was uh, chrome. On most of them, this part's chrome, some of them it's black. But nonetheless, on the pre-AI lenses, the hyperfocal marks are usually underneath the, um, the focusing ring. On the AI series, that's not necessarily true. Uh, here is, here's an AI 35mm um, f2.8, although it's identical to the K series, which this is another subject for another day, but it is also underneath the focusing ring uh, on the lens barrel, only this time the barrel is black. Um, here is, well, this is the, uh, the 24 f2, it's an AIS series lens, 
The hyperfocal uh, marks are here on this chrome strip in between the focusing ring and the aperture ring. Uh, that's fairly common for AI AIS lenses. And also, where's the other one? Here we go. On the 2835, the hyperfocal marks are, they're not on the, the chrome ring, they're just above the chrome ring. Um, again, but they're not, they're not underneath the, um, uh, the, the, the focusing ring. They're, they're flush with the focusing ring. Okay, so that's where you find the, the hyperfocal marks. That's what they mean, and that's how you can use them. Uh, if you understand this, you can, you can really save a lot of money and, um, uh, and become a, uh, a better photographer because you know more. All right, I hope you found this useful. If you did, please check out my self-published book, Nikon Film Cameras, Which One is Right for You? It is $3 worth of knowledge, guaranteed. See the link below. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.